Hi flower friends. I'm in the garden this morning grabbing a couple green tomatoes because my grandmother and one of her friends are coming up to the nursery today to grab the green tomatoes. And it's also CSA day. So I'm gonna be making a few bouquets. It's early, it's 6.30 in the morning. And I'm trying to get on the road early because I have to deliver these flowers and get back before my grandmother gets there. So, and they're also putting the final touches on the greenhouse today. So the new doors are going in. So this is gonna be a busy day and I'm just getting it started. So hang on tight. Uh, green tomatoes are basically just unripe tomatoes and I have a lot of those. It is, it doesn't look very <laughs> organized, but tomatoes, peppers, basil, tomatoes, tomatoes, peppers. There's a lot going on here, um, but I am just grabbing a couple green tomatoes. A nice one. And this one looks pretty good. Hey, here are a couple of buckets of flowers that I'm bringing. I already have some stems at the nursery to make my bouquets. Oh, it looks like this Zenny I didn't make it. Now I call this one kinky Zinnia. And yes, I'm making that t-shirt. All right, I'm here at the nursery and these are my ingredients for the bouquets today. I told you guys I already had some stuff cut here. And this is what I was talking about. This entire bucket of status. I have so much status this year. It's awesome. Last year it was kind of a dud. I had some rust issues on the status. This year, opposite story. I've got some sitting over here that are drying. Let me just spin the camera around. I've got this shelf right here. Whatever I don't use out of this bucket, putting right up here, I'm gonna dry it the same. You can dry it hanging, really. You really should be drying it hanging. However, I'm finding it to be drying just fine on the shelf. So this has been sitting on the shelf for a couple of weeks now. Um, the uh, the flowers are going to remain that gorgeous color for, I mean, a year. <laughs> I've had it last like this for a year. I found pieces of status on my porch from the year before that look gorgeous. So I know they're lasting a long time. I just had a shorter stem fall out. It was just hanging out there. Put that back up. Okay, so the other ingredients today, I just harvested these yesterday morning. These are just some limelight hydrangea stems. And then this is another one I'm gonna have to, I cannot remember the, I think it's Invincible Ruby. And what I did was I harvested it yesterday and then I used something called Quick Dip because I'm always nervous that my hydrangeas are going to wilt after my consumer gets the bouquet. So I did invest in a giant jug of Quick Dip, which is a solution. It's an immediate hydration tool for flowers. You can use it on more than hydrangeas. You can use them basically on a lot of flowers, but what you do is you just fill a little, I used a pint canning jar, put a couple inches of Quick Dip in, and then I literally Quick Dip. You're supposed to put it in there for one second and then put it back in the water, and that is a hydration tool for your hydrangeas. I'm going to feel confident that the quick dip is going to work on these blooms today. I don't have a lot of bouquets to make today. I thought, okay, I don't have a ton to make. If I get up extra early, I can actually put a video together of bouquet making because I know you guys have been hungry. You're thirsty for books. Okay, other ingredients. We have lime. Where are you? Over here, okay. Other ingredients today, we have cinnamon and lime basil. You guys know how much I love my basil. And like I said, I think I only have seven bouquets to make today. So I didn't go crazy with harvesting. Um, this is cinnamon. It's got the dark purple stems. You guys know that. And this is Mrs. Burns lemon basil. Oh, it's so good. And customers are torn. Usually if I'm making a bouquet in front of someone, I'll say, would you prefer lemon basil or cinnamon basil for your fragrance? I would say most people choose lemon However, if they smell them, most people choose cinnamon. Okay, I have some, just a few sprigs of snow on the mountain euphorbia. This has um, a sap that some people are afraid of. I have some, some customers who absolutely adore it and request it. So I have some of that. And then I also have some honeywort a few stems of honeywort. I cut this a few days ago. Um, it's looking great. It's like a spiller that you put. It's a green element to use in the bouquets. I have 
Um, just a few straw flowers today. I've got some pinks and some yellow straw flowers. Like I said, this is a small number of bouquets I'm doing today, so I didn't go crazy with the harvest. Okay, let me move this and bring this bucket forward. Okay, this bucket right here is, so listen guys, oh, my gladiolas and my sunflowers are super far behind, but it's not just me. I'm all of my friends who grow flowers or any kind of annuals, even vegetables, it is a tough year for annuals. The perennials are fantastic this year. The hydrangeas, I'm hearing everyone's perennials are doing amazing, but everyone's annuals are kind of struggling, and that seems to be the case for me too. Our sunflowers should have been blooming two weeks ago according to the days to maturity on the package. You know, a pro cut, 55 days to maturity. I planted it like 75 days ago, and I'm just now getting buds, and they're not coloring up yet, so it's probably gonna be another week before I see sunflowers. Same thing with my glads. I only have a few glads blooming, and these are the ones that I actually didn't lift from the ground. We just tilled them under, and some of them grew back. So I've got just a few glads. I mean, they're beautiful. I think this one's from Jake's Ruffle Mix. I'm hearing from a lot of you guys how gorgeous your ruffly gladiolas are. Um, hello, <laughs> you can't beat it. I am partnering with Jake on a bearded iris sale. I'm just waiting for him to send me the link, so stay tuned for that. There may be some other quick sales that he'll put together for us. Oh, and here's another, like I said, I only have a few glads, so my CSA members will be fighting for these today. Okay, and then in here we have some, oh, this one wasn't in the water, so she's a little sad. We have some Sweet William, the Amazon stems. I've got quite a few of these in here. And then we've got some zinnias, which you've got the Benary Giant. Um, they're looking great this year. I am struggling with Japanese beetles, so I do have Japanese beetles damage. You can see it on the leaves. Um, I tear all these leaves off so you cannot see the evidence um, because the flower itself still looks great. The beetles for me this year are pretty much staying below. I have not sprayed. I did. I have Miranda, one of my helpers, I did have her um, kind of put them in, you know, the soapy water. I did have her do that twice so far, but they seem to be on the way out. Cross your fingers. They are not bothering my dahlias. So I do have some dahlias in here and I'll show them to you guys right now. I have, I don't, I'm, I'm afraid I'm gonna hurt them. I have a favorite this year and it's a new to me dahlia, and I don't know why I chose it. Uh, it was just one of those things where I was browsing in the catalog and it just stuck out to me. This Snapdragon doesn't want to let go. <laughs> it just stuck out to me, and it is called Hillcrest Suffusion, and it's so good. It's like a peachy apricot, but before it's all the way done, can you see like the lavender mauve hues in the middle? The underside, oh, this one right here. The underside, it just has like a mauve tone, purple lavender tone to it from the side. Oh, it's so good. And then, <laughs> the same thing with my snaps that are ready. So these guys go so well together. It's sickening, sickening. <gasps> They don't smell good. They make some people like nauseous, but I adore them. So we've got these to work with today. Like I said, I have more of those snaps in here. And then the other dahlia that I have is called Arabian Night. It is a dark, gorgeous one. I have six or seven of these in the bucket. Um, I really, really love this one. This is a keeper for me. And then, who else is in here? Oh, you! This is a gorgeous white ball, Dahlia, and I have to look at my phone to remember who she is, because it's written down. I just don't remember off the top of my head. We got a couple of those in here. So my Dahlias have been blooming for a little bit, and they're gorgeous, and I love them. Let's see who it is. She is, she is, it's in my notes in my phone and I have a tab called Dahlias and then I wrote down 2023 Dahlias and they're in front of Arabian Night, Rycroft Jan. Yeah, Rycroft Jan. It is a four inch 
ball dahlia. It's gorgeous. Yeah, that's what that is. Okay. So Arabian Night, Hillcrest Suffusion, and Rycroft Jan are the dahlias I'm using today. I do have other dahlias. However, I did not need to harvest them. I'll harvest those later this week because I have farmer's market on Friday and I think we're gonna skip my CSA this week for my Boomville members because the Woodsman's Field Days is going on this weekend and it is a worldwide lumberjacking competition and it takes place on the fairgrounds right next to my shop. There are tens of thousands of people who come and I like parking is a nightmare. So for my members to come here and pick up my flowers, it's, a little bit of insanity so i think we're going to skip this week and then have my members come to for you know a week later than normal i already talked to a few of them they were like yes please because they know if you're from around here you know if you're not going to woodsman's field days it's kind of chaotic in boomville to come to the village okay let's just put these things together because i've been talking for a million million minutes and i only have limited time i also have some sahara rubecchia i'll show you guys those as i'm making the bouquet so i've really been dying to work with the Hillcrest Suffusion, which everyone's getting a hydrangea stem today, and I'm not going to cut this again. So all of my bouquets are going to be the length of the hydrangea stems. Uh, all the other stuff in the bouquet I will be able to trim. However, I'm not trimming that one. I've really been wanting to put this. It's like all of the things that are the similar color tones are ripening together. So those Snapdragons, I posted a little reel on Instagram and everyone was commenting about how my Snapdragons look so sturdy and strong this late in the season. Well, that was a second planting of Snapdragons. Ball, well, Dave Dowling from Ball Color Link, he actually emailed out everybody and said, hey, we have some leftover Snapdragon trays. They're on sale if anyone would like to buy some, except for you had to buy five trays or something to, to fill a shipping box. And I was like, okay, I'll do that. It's like $30 a tray for Snapdragons. So I said, sure. And I ordered five trays of Snapdragons. And I believe, I'll look up the date and I'll put it on the screen of when I received them because I got them in the mail and I planted them over the next seven to 10 days. They're perfect. They're blooming so perfectly and just in time because my first planting, my first succession of Snapdragons, they're petering out. So now I have this perfect replacement and they're, they're honestly, I love the thickness of them. They're the pencil thickness. They're great. They're great and they're a little crooked right now because I've said this in videos before, if they're crooked in the bucket overnight, they're gonna wake up crooked. So my guys were crooked in the bucket overnight. <laughs> But that's okay. They're still pretty. All right, let's add some honey wart to this guy. I need to bring in a little bit of darkness, and I'll do that with the Sweet William, the Amazon. That adds that little pop of contrast to all of these peachy pink hues. So I'm going to add three pops of those. Who else? some basil and some status. So I'm thinking I'm gonna go with a pink status here. Yep, got lots of pink status. This bucket is packed really tight. <gasps> yes, that's doing the same thing that the Sweet William did. So I'm gonna tuck these in the middle for that color. And then, look at this. What I love about status is it has, one stem has so many cuts you can choose from. This lower one is coming off because of the unusability of the lower stem. I'm gonna put that over there. Ooh. Okay, and now I need some basil, some basil. Where are you, basil? Oh, you know what, I'm gonna use last week's basil. I also have this bucket of basil that I cut two days prior, so I'm gonna go ahead and use this. Basil, I mean, it is so awesome, guys. Sometimes it will root right in the vase. It'll just root. Why, how is it possible that my hair ends up on everything? I don't get it. Okay. I am using one, two, three, four sprigs of basil. Let me put that up a little bit. Where are you? Okay. So every stem needs to be cut to right here because that's where um, the hydrangea stem is. Okay, well, let me get my cut bucket, my chum bucket. 
Oh, that's got water in it. <laughs> you little, little snake. Okay, so I'll use this chum bucket. Cut all the stems. My bouquet making tools are on the other side, which just consists really of my rubber bands, my bouquet paper. I haven't gotten anything out yet. Um, I use number 32 rubber bands. All of like my supplies are in the description of this video with links to where I purchased them. Here, let's just turn this way a minute. Okay, so I've got the rubber band. I have flower food packets. My paper. I have 18 by 18 inch sheets that I buy from Uline. They are perfect for my books. These ones are a little fat. My stapler is over there. Organization is a skill that I've not yet acquired. I have cute little stickers that I put on the outside of the paper. Mine say straight out of Boonville. They don't have my logo or anything on it. Um, I bought these for shipping when I did Bernunculus Corms last year. I just put straight out of Boonville. Yeah, straight out of Boonville with some Bernunculus Corms. Thought it was cute. So I'm using them this year on the bouquets. Okay, and now I need to put them in a bucket of water. Let's see if I can locate that. All right, I am gonna make one, another one very similar to that, so I might speed up this portion of the video. Ooh, I am gonna add something different here. I'm gonna add, this is a Sahara Rubecchia. I'm gonna take off the lower stem. I am gonna add that in here for a little bit of, of darkness. All right, I'm gonna go over here. I'm gonna grab, actually I'm gonna grab a pink straw flower and add that one to this one as well. And some honeywort. And then this one's done too. Oh, they're just so thick and gorgeous this week. Here's the hydrangea stem. It's lovely. Okay, let's do something different. Oh, oh, wow. That bucket is looking good. Okay, I'm not using any zinnias. I need to put some zinnias in. Okay, so we're going to do one of the Arabian Nights. And let's do... Oh, I mean, you can never go wrong with a queen lime zinnia. Correct? Correct. Let me get these chewed up leaves out of here. Okay, so I'm going to use more of the Sahara Rudbeckia in here. Get rid of the lower leaves. Anything that's gonna be in the water, guys, you wanna get rid of that because anything, like a leaf or something, it goes into the water and it starts to decompose and it releases bacteria, creates bacteria in the water, and it will lessen the life of your cut flowers. Okay, so we're gonna go with a cinnamon basil for this one. I feel like this yellow is good. We're gonna bring in the pink. I don't like the red zinnia in there. I think I would like it. Yes, this one. Okay, so we've got some purples and pinks. I don't like the yellow. I'm taking the yellow out. I'm adding the pink straw flower. That makes me happy. And now I'm bringing in the deep hues of the cinnamon basil. It's weird not being on my porch making these. Okay. Queen lime, so come this way, the dahlia. I'm gonna need to um, fix this. Ooh, you know what? I'm gonna go with the dark, see how this looks. 
I like the dark purple with this. Mm -hmm. Pops of color. Okay, let's go over here. Oh, you know what? I should have harvested some red snapdragons. I have some red ones. I don't like this color with these, so I'm gonna add another Sahara Rebecca, and I'm gonna add another Dahlia because I'm not adding the snapdragons to this bouquet. This just feels like all of the beautiful colors combined, and I love it so much. My battery on my camera is gonna die. It had three bars when I turned my camera on. It has not been that long. It has not been that long, people. Honey wart, honey wart. This one is making me super happy. I love the hues of the pink with the queen lime and the darkness of the Arabian Night Dahlia and the pop of the purple status. Ugh. Okay. It's gonna be great, guys. Now look at this bucket. <laughs> oh. That one. Oh. And that one. I think my favorite element I love the dahlias, but I love the side dahlias that are not open yet. A white. I'm gonna break off one of the side shoots. I'm gonna go with a white hydrangea with this one as well, because I think we can load the rest of it with color. I'm gonna take this opportunity to use the reds, the red zins. Okay, we are loading this up. You know what else I'm gonna use? Snow on the mountain, Euphorbia. <laughs> oh, yes I am. Okay, I'm going to use some lime basil. The reds and the whites, guys. Oh. This is going to bring in fragrance and some more shades of green. That Dahlia, Rycroft Jan. <laughs> New favorite. Okay, when it comes to status, I am gonna use these peach hues. Sorry, I just kicked um, the tripod. Oh my goodness, yes, I don't have many. Peach is the least that I have from the field, but it's just enough to bring in that pop of color. Wow. Do I have any more? Yes. It's just enough, it's perfect. And I'm gonna put some I think, ooh. Well, that just rounded it out for me. I just added these two um, darker Rebecca's and that just rounded the whole darn thing out for me. Oh yes, that's happening. Okay, let me bundle this up. Now I'm gonna do a yellow and dark one, I think, with the Arabian Nights. I'm gonna grab two Arabian Nights and then load it in with the yellow stuff that I have. Grab this one. Because I've got straw flowers. And I've got this Rebecca. Oh, that's gonna be really pretty. Oh. These colors together, I really love. Okay, so let's fill in. Let's fill in some fill. I don't know if I wanna do a hydrangea with this one, but I have a smaller hydrangea that I can use. Oh, yes. With basil. And then we're gonna do yellow status. Yellow status to me, I, I don't love it. However, it has a place, and its place is in this bouquet. I'm also bringing in a couple of the snaps in this one because it has that beautiful coloring on the bottom on these snaps. Yellow status, coming in hot. It's packed too tightly in here. That's the problem with the status. Oh yes, gorgeous. This one's like a butter yellow right here. Grab that one. It is packed too tightly. So this, I can actually break off and use 
three different stems. Oh, I should probably clip it. Okay, there's one. There's a second over here. And then here is a third. It's one of the reasons why florists love status so much is because you purchase, you know, 10 stems of it and you actually get more like 40 stems of it because it's so long and it has all those side shoots and a lot of those side shoots, even like a florist, when they make those tiny tabletop arrangements, they could use a status with only a four inch stem, you know? So, all right, I haven't used any glads. I don't think it goes with this bouquet. So I'm gonna skip it on this one. Um, and I'm gonna take a quick look at this again and see if there's anything else I want to add to it. Maybe some honeywort, get more green in here. Mm. Wow, <laughs> I think this one's my favorite. I wish I had a yellow zinnia. I didn't cut any yellow zins. So that's the only thing I'm kind of missing right now. I'm gonna add a couple more sprigs of cinnamon basil. Oh my gosh. Okay. My alarm's going off. I must, it was my reminder to harvest green tomatoes and I got up earlier than I planned and I did that already. So alarm off. Okay, this is my favorite. There is that combination. I really love it. Okay. I have, I only have um, two more to make. So I'm going to this and I'm gonna put this one in. This is um, a gorgeous glad with the Hillcrest dahlias and the hydrangea. Um, I'm really feeling like putting in these little, I have all these Oklahoma pink zinnias. So they're smaller, but they have just the cutest little impacts. I've got a few of them. So I'm gonna put them in here with this. Coral zinnia, oh my gosh. A couple of the snaps, why not? This is an overlay. You know what? I don't think I'm gonna put the hydrangea in this one. I feel like this is gonna be a monochrome. Uh-huh. <laughs> like, they're, it's just all the same color. And I'm just gonna do greens with this one. I like it. Um, my camera battery just died. So I only have my phone now. So I'm gonna figure out a way to set you up so that I can um, finish these last couple bouquets. This will be my thumbnail for the video. Okay, now I gotta figure this out. Okay, it's a little lower, the angle's not great, but at least I can show you. Oh, and this, this shelf shakes, guys, look. We'll see, we'll see. Okay, I'm putting all the basil in. So I'm just breaking up all of the green. I mean, all of the apricot hues. It's really like pinks, apricots, and oranges. That's this vibe. I wanna get these dahlias away from each other. I feel like there's gonna be a fight. You stay on your side and you stay on your side. We'll be a happy family. Okay, so we've got lemon basil. I'm, I'm using lemon because I don't wanna bring the cinnamon basil darkness to it. I mean, I could, but I'm not going to. I am, however, gonna bring in some pops of status. I'm just not sure, maybe white? Yup. Let me bring these zinnias up. I don't want them to get crushed. A lot of times what happens is I'll be arranging and all of a sudden, like I just pulled those dahlias out and now they're way too tall and the zinnias are getting lost. And I don't want that to happen because every flower plays a role and I don't want them to get lost in translation. Okay, yes, with the white status. Yes, let's add more. White and apricot are my favorite status colors. However, this year I grew a, it, it was just a QIS mix, so I don't have a dedicated color patch. 
It's all a mix. She be mixing it up. I know you guys don't know that because of, um, I haven't really shown you guys much of the field lately. It's just been an overwhelming season. You guys know everything that's been going on with me. It's been chaos. What do you think? That is pretty great. I love it. I know my, my customers are going to love it. Oh, you know what? Maybe a snow on the mountain. Yep. There she is. She brings it all together. All of it. Honey wart. Okay. All right. I'm going to wrap this one up. I know when I walk, it's going to shake. Make sure that the wherever the shortest stem is, that's where your cut is. Because you don't want any uh, stems not in the water. I'm over here. <laughs> I told you, the camera is tilting a little bit up. So it's, it's very unflattering. How many chins do I have in this one? That many. Oh, dropped ya. <laughs> I was just gonna bring you over here so you could actually see my wrap a little bit better. Okay, so I'm literally taking the 18 by 18, folding it up so that it becomes a pyramid or a triangle for you common folk. So now it's a pyramid. <laughs> I'm setting the book. Oh, hello. Right here, I'm taking the corners and I'm touching them together, sliding the book down a wee bit and pinching it here, taking my stopler, pinching it there and stopling it there. And then I take the top part and I fold it over. And then I take my stopler, the skinny part, shove it down in there and click. Look at the book. And I'm upside down. <laughs> No, but seriously though, hello. This, mm, I am, <laughs> I kind of was giving up on dahlias. I know I didn't even do an I Dream of Dahlias video, which would have been year four for I Dream of Dahlias. And I was telling um, Cozy Town Dahlias, I was telling her that I kind of was giving up because last year I had zero, but it was my fault. I planted them in an area that needed irrigation. It didn't have irrigation and we ended up not having a really great rain season that year. This year, I planted them in fabric. I planted them um, really in an area where I was more attentive to and we got much more rain this season. Even though I planted really, really late, we're still having a successful dahlia year and it's really all about the mindset. So I'm turning the negativity that I had about dahlias into positivity about dahlias and I'm being a little bit more conscientious about where I'm planting them because putting them in the middle of the wildflower field, it just wasn't a smart idea. I was never over there. It's untamed over there. There was no way the dahlias were gonna compete with those weeds. That frosted explosion grass, I would never plant that from seed. It is invasive. I have never planted it from seed. It grows everywhere around here and people see it and they think weed. I've used it in bouquets, don't get me wrong. Some people like it, but it is, taking over that whole wildflower field it's basically a field of frosted explosion grass oh i see what i did here okay i'm gonna do this right here i have a hill crest it's just got a little bit of a tarnished plant bug spot it's okay see how it doesn't have like it's missing a petal right there a lot of times those tarnished plant bugs will, um, well, that's exactly what they do. They tarnish your plant. So they'll chew on it when it's looking like this. They'll like bite one spot and then that petal won't grow there. So I still think it's perfect. So we'll use it. Okay, so what I'm doing here is the hill crest and the rye cropped Jean. <laughs> Murder, she wrote. <laughs> I'd like to remove additional side shoots only because I don't want it to struggle to hydrate. That's why I did that. Hello. Oh my gosh. Okay. Yup. Couple of you. Couple of you. Couple of you. Maybe three. Two, three. Two, three of you. Okay. Oh. I can unwrinkle it. I just put an iron on it and it's fine now. And another. Okay. We're gonna cinnamon basil this baby up. 
Oh, I've got lots of cinnamon basil here as well. Oh, it smells like something's baking in here. It really does smell like cinnamon. Mmm, so spicy. Ooh, look, that's coming with me. So people were asking how um, how I chose sturdy Sahara Rubecchias. Well, that's the thing. It's, you kind of got to do the wiggle test like you do on zinnias. Clearly, this one's a little bit wiggly. So what I do in this case is, I mean, if I was a florist, I'd stick a pin in it and it would be a sturdy straight neck. However, what I will do, because I'm not a florist and I'm not putting metal in my little neck here, I am going to situate it in the bouquet so that it's on top of other fleurs so that it has something to lean against. If I put it on the outside, it would be a floppy kink right there, and we don't want that. Some of them, however, this is a little bit sturdier. That's sturdier, so I could put this on the outside like that. But this one over here, she's a little kinky, so she's staying on there. We're gonna add some, I think I'm gonna go with the purples. It's like the, the blue status. Oh, why are you so precious? You are so precious, okay. Oh wow, okay, all right. This is who is coming to town today. It is a ball of summer with a little introduction to fall. I'm gonna clip. Here's this gorgeousness. Oh, she's just so perfect. Oh, okay, I'm, I'm gonna do one more. I'm gonna do one more. I'm gonna do Arabian Night. Now this Arabian Night has an open face. I planted 25 Arabian Nights. I will not save this tuber. Um, some people like the open faces, it's fine, but I wanna preserve my Arabian Nights and so I want them to look the way they're supposed to look, which is with, excuse me, mm -hmm. the closed face. My whole entire childhood, every single time I opened my grandparents' door, the first thing you heard was grandpa whistling. I love it. I love them all today. It's been a rough year, guys, and I know that we haven't been on the farm as much as all of you guys wish we were. Um, I'm making changes so that next year we can absolutely make it work because I'm only one person and I did really stretch myself thin this year and between my grandfather's passing and some struggles that we were having at the nursery and between my kids both having surgery, <laughs> it's been a wild ride and I just feel like I'm getting my bearings now and I know that the next year is just going to be amazing and this year we've, we've had some wins, we've had some incredible losses and uh, we're bouncing back and it's gonna be better than ever. I know it is. Thank you guys for sticking with me through the thick and the thin, through the tough and the fantastic. I know you guys are huge supporters of me and I really appreciate all of everything, all of the thoughts, all of the emails, all of everything. So just thank you guys so much and more flowers to come. See you soon. Here's the bucket of books. 
Oh, we've got lots. I just, I love this one. I love them all. They are really fantastic this week, and I hope my customers love them.